Sí. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die, but live new life. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection. Thank you. 
I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I welcome you to worship with us here at Trinity on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Special welcome to visitors we have with us this morning, as well as those of you watching on our YouTube channel. And for those of you who are watching, a reminder to get your bread and wine or grape juice ready as we celebrate communion today. <coughs> Excuse me. The flowers this morning are uh, the first bouquet is from Lynn and Karen Hirsch in celebration of their wedding anniversary. And they were married on April 23rd, 1966. So if my math is right, that makes it 58 years of married bliss. <laughs> and the other bouquet, <coughs> bouquet is from Becky Gokwa in memory of Sandy Engel. So thank you all for the flowers. <laughs> After worship today, the CCB sign-up training for worship servant continues. And today, you will be introduced to uh, downloading the My Church app for volunteers on, their, on your cell phone to easy access the sign-up uh, schedule platform. There will be people available to help you, which is always a good thing, I would think. <laughs> Um, and also to sign up for servant roles through CCB. So all morning, uh, Sunday morning worship servants are encouraged to attend. And finally, a message from uh, Helen. So please note that the mailboxes in the narthex has been reordered. So the game this afternoon is find your mailbox. <laughs> oh, no. Boxes are now arranged mostly alphabetically mostly is the operative word, with attention to those who may not be able to reach high. Those families who have two last names will find their boxes arranged alphabetically by one of the names listed first, with no particular regard for gender or alphabet. So why are we doing this? Uh, we are hoping to provide everyone who wants one with a permanent name badge in the near future, and the mailbox is a good place to store it between visits. So if you do not wish to have a box, remove the label and throw it away. <laughs> we still know who you are. That's all. <laughs> if you need one or a correction needs to be made, contact Helen Harms or put a note in her mailbox. And if you don't like the location of your box, there are lots of empty ones, so just pick another one. <laughs> And those are the announcements I have this morning. <laughs> so we'll begin our worship with a thanksgiving for baptism, and I would invite you to rise. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Water, water, we praise you, O God, for water, the rain that nourishes animals and plants, the water for drinking and bathing. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for our water stories, a flood that cleansed the earth, the sea that drowned the enemy, a river that healed leprosy. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We remember the waters of Jesus, baptized in the Jordan River, calming the Sea of Galilee, drinking from Jacob's well, healing at the pool of Bethesda, washing the disciples' feet. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for this font, for through this water you have birthed us into the family of Christ. Bathe us in forgiveness and enliven us in the Spirit. We praise you, O God, for baptism. We praise you, O God, for baptism. O God, you are the ocean sustaining this earth. O God, you are the river saving us from death. O God, you are the fountain granting us health and well-being. We praise you, O God, today, tomorrow, forever. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Trumpet 
lights and the angels sing. The feast is ready to begin. The gates of heaven are open wide, and Jesus welcomes us inside. Sing with thankfulness songs of pure delight. Come and revel in heaven's love and light. Take your place at the table of the King. The feast is ready to begin. The feast is ready to begin. Tables are laden with good things. Oh, taste the peace and joy he brings. He'll fill you up with love divine. He'll turn your water into wine. Sing with thankfulness songs of pure delight. Come and revel in heaven's love and light. Take your place at the table of the king. The feast is ready to begin. The feast is ready to begin. The hungry heart he satisfies, offers the poor his paradise. Now hear all heaven and earth applaud the amazing goodness of the Lord. Sing with thankfulness songs of pure delight. Come and revel in heaven's love and light. Take your place at the table of the king. The feast is ready to begin. The feast is ready to begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us. To be one great people of God. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Power and riches. Wisdom and might, all honor and glory to Christ forever. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forever. For God has come to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forever.
Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Acts chapter 4. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 23, and we will read it together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in one. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table. You anoint my 
reading from 1 John 3. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or a sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. <clears throat> the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that I do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Sit. <clears throat> there are many places in life where we find concepts and images that would have been most natural for the people of an earlier time period, but that we find strange and foreign in a world that we live in today. Today's gospel reading from John, as well as the famous 20, Psalm 23, gives us this problem of past concepts that are hard to bring images into our world. After all, how many of you can say that you know a real live shepherd? And so I did ask that question in another congregation and several people rose there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> On the other hand, the shepherd image would have been a natural image for the writers in the Bible time. Shepherding was a trade everyone had some kind of connection with. And in biblical times, the shepherd image would have been an image every person could have in identified with instantly. But talking about sheep and shepherd is what this day in the life of the church is all about. This Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is called the Good Shepherd Sunday because every year we read from John chapter 10 and all of which involves Jesus 
as the Good Shepherd motif. And the Good Shepherd image has been a favorite for a long time throughout Christianity. But it may be interesting to learn that the Good Shepherd image actually wrote, has its roots in the Old Testament. The prophet Isaiah, for example, said this in his chapter 40 about the people in the Babylonian exile. Quote, the Lord will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. Jeremiah and Ezekiel are other prophets from the Old Testament who often use the image of the shepherd when referring to God. And the New Testament then picks, off, picks up where the Old Testament left off as far as the shepherd motif for God is concerned. And that's, of course, especially true for the Gospel of John. And why is the Good Shepherd such an appropriate image for Jesus? <clears throat> well, reading in the dictionary about the shepherds, I found out that the characteristics that are exemplified in shepherds in general are that they are caring, loving, compassionate, guiding, and self-sacrificing. And if that's who they are, no wonder the image of Jesus is that of the Good Shepherd. After all, we know that he nurtured and loved the people around him while he was walking on this earth. And so we come to worship, worshiping this Good Shepherd through the word and at the table we come to find that love and nurturing from him in our lives each and every time we come to worship. This image speaks, after all, of a huge need in many people's lives, the need to be cared for and loved. And let's face it, we all want to like the idea that someone out there thinks that we are special. But sadly, sometimes our need for this recognition causes people to open up themselves to all kinds of people and influences who carries destructive voices. And that's the warning for us in our gospel reading for today. What we do need to recognize is the reality that there are many different voices out there who call us to follow them. Voices who know that we are looking for guidance. Voices who know that we are looking for answers. And in the instant society that we live in, receiving the answers instead of looking for them may be the thing to do. But is it the right thing? Is it the safe thing to do? And to give us an answer to the question whether we follow the right voice, we then turn to our gospel reading, where the writer John gives us contrast comparisons between two individuals, a contrast between the good shepherd and the hired hand. These two uh, comparison represents two completely different kinds of leadership because that's what this passage is all about. The community we read about is being portrayed as a sheepfold and its leaders are described in John chapter 10 positively or negatively as shepherds, thieves, bandits, gatekeepers, strangers, gates and hired hands. And of course, all of these are figures of speech. But with that in mind, we find that the main theme, theme in today's reading is the very first verse that we read in the gospel where Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. What it means to be laying down his life for the sheep is then described using those di two different leaders, the hired hand that does not care for the sheep because they're not his, or so he wouldn't lay down his life. And the good shepherd who does lay down his life because they are his sheep, they belong to him, they, are an intimate, they have an intimate relationship with him. And this relationship with the shepherd that the shepherd has with the sheep is the kind of knowledge that friends and family have of each other, such as the emotional ties between partners or between parents and children. That's why the analogy with God the Father is being made. Just as God knows Jesus and Jesus knows God, so also Jesus knows the community intimately and the community knows him. 
And because of this intimate relationship, we need to understand that in the Christian community of faith, this relationship is one of hope, joy, and freedom. We are the people who are guided by the shepherd, who loves us so much that he promises in Psalm 23 to walk with us at all times, even through the valley of the shadow of death. Jesus the Christ, God's only son, the one who died for our, us and for our sins, is then the shepherd in our lives, the one who gives us a sense of security in life in a way that nobody else can. Now, to follow this argument to its logical conclusion, we need to admit that if Jesus is the shepherd, it means that we are the sheep. It may not be too flattering to see us ourselves as sheep, because sheep are really not noted for their visionary and leadership abilities. <laughs> they are, in fact, followers, which can become a dilemma for us in our world today, because we, in our society, we are told not to be followers, but always strive to be leaders. But Jesus' characteristic was indeed to tell people to follow him. It was the call of a shepherd to his sheep, following the Old Testament shepherd tradition that conveyed its true meaning. And when we follow Jesus, we can be assured that we are led to safety out of the valleys of the shadow of death, the valleys where we are easy prey for pride, arrogance, self-centeredness, and all the other things that brings us down in life. So instead of finding ourselves in those valleys in life, we then find that a life trusting in the Good Shepherd, in Jesus himself, will lead us to the right place in our lives. And in that right place, we receive the gifts the Good Shepherd has to give us, grace, peace, and mercy. The grace that we live in, the hope that we have in life, and the peace that we share with each other. And so to follow Jesus the Christ is a call to remember the grace that we received in the water and word in our baptism. By God's grace, we recognize the voice of the one whose death and resurrection brought healing and life itself to us and to all humanity. And as we hear his voice, we can trust in his presence in our life, guiding us, caring for us, and protecting us, just as the shepherd does for his flock of the sheep. And for the gift of grace to hear and know that shepherd's voice, calling us to be part of his flock and to respond to this call, all we can really do is say, thanks be to God.
words of Nicene Creed, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May be seated for the pledge. Rejoicing in the glory of resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Bless all who shepherd your sheep and guide them in their serving. Thank you to those who were inspired to make meals, provide supplies, and give generously to Alpha House this week. And guide us as we continue to serve your whole church and to find sustenance, caring, love, hope, and joy through Jesus Christ. Receive our prayers, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Guide this congregation as we seek to understand each other's differences as gifts that help, in our, help us in our work of reaching out to people and sharing our faith. Receive our prayers, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, help us restore natural environments damaged by our hands. We pray for river valleys and grassy plains, coral reefs and arctic ice, mountains, deserts, marshlands. We pray for the areas of our country experiencing storm and severe weather. Receive our prayers, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Hear us as we pray for those who work for peace and justice around the world, especially in Ukraine, Palestine, Iran, Haiti, and South Sudan, looking towards the day when every nation and people will work in unity for the common good. Receive our prayers, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal and renew all who ache for a better tomorrow. We pray for the unemployed and underemployed, the forgotten, the nameless, the outcasts, for our enemies and for our loved ones. We pray also for those who live with chronic pain, who live with anxiety, who are ill or hospitalized. We think especially of Sue, the Hawkins family, Francis, Tom, Barb, Rick, Jameson, Brittany, Lee, Carmen, Henry Martin, Tracy and children, Angie, Haley, the Baker family, Allison, Sally, Jeff, Jan, Cindy, Karen, Nolan, Dottie, Bunny, Bill and Mary, Heather, Peter, Kevin, Marcia, Dale, Paul, Fred, Judy, Joe, Betty, Mike, Ann, Ann, Sarah, Lyle, and Carol, and also those we name before you now.
Receive our prayers, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who have died and are commended into your hands, thinking especially of Sue LeClaire, who entered life eternal this past week. Keep us in communion with them as we remember your promise of resurrection and eternal life. Receive our prayers, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people and mission of our congregation, those celebrating birthdays this week, Bernadette, Marilyn, Judy, Quinn, Luke, Linda, Nathaniel, Kim, Kathy, and Barb. And those celebrating anniversaries, Lynn and Karen, Greg and Linda, Mike and Brenda. For the volunteers in all aspects of our ministry here at Trinity. For the call committee and their work leading to the call of a new pastor. For Sarah on medical leave that we respect her request for privacy during her time away in the month of April. Receive our prayers, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and its presiding bishop, Elizabeth, our Southeast Michigan Synod and its Bishop Donald, as well as the congregations here in our conference, thinking today of King of Kings Lutheran here in Ann Arbor and its interim pastor, Reverend Dana Runstead, and our own interim pastor, Christer. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Joining our voices with the faithful ones of every time and place, we offer our prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the people say, Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also we share that peace with each other. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the name, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believe in the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share the Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Come to the table, for all is now ready, and all are welcome. And for those watching at home, the bread and wine is blessed, so the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Okay, be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated as we call the children forward, and Julia is going to do the message this morning.
you stand if you're able um, for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious on you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You are the body of Christ raised up in the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.